Hello, my name is Dr. Kelly Barrett and I am a large animal veterinarian. My name is Laura Sherman and I work as the herd manager at Joe Loeth & Sons Dairy Farms in Ancaster, Ontario. Today, we are going to discuss how to care for calves during the first 24 hours of life. The first 24 hours after a calf is born can have tremendous effects on their overall performance and health throughout their life. This makes early management and rearing practices a key component to raising a healthy, hardy calf. This video will be focusing on the calf care practices that are required after a normal birth. If the calving is difficult, additional care practices may be needed for both the cow and the calf. It's important to recognize the signs of a difficult calving early and call your veterinarian if help is needed. Once calving is complete, ensure the airways are open and the calf is able to breathe. If you gently tickle the inside of the calf's nostril with a clean piece of straw, you will stimulate the calf to take a deep breath and encourage sneezing and cleaning of any mucus remaining in the airway. Never hang the calf over a gate as this can cause damage to its internal organs and it impairs its ability to take a deep breath. The calf can also be stimulated by rubbing its body with a towel or clean, dry straw. It's very important to prevent disease transmission from the calving area to the calf. This can be done by placing the calf in a corner of the pen that is gated off, or Rubbermaid tub, as both can be cleaned between calvings. If this can't be done, it is best to move the calf to a clean hutch or individual pen right away to avoid disease transmission from the cow or the environment to the calf. So we, we let the cow stay with the calf for about 12 to 24 hours. It kind of depends on how long it takes the calf to expel the placenta. But as soon as the calf has expelled the placenta and the calf has had its two feedings of colostrum, we will take him or her on a golf cart ride and move out to a hutch outside the barn. We like the hutches because they provide natural ventilation for the calf. Housing must provide the animal with enough space to stand up, lie down, turn 180 degrees and rest normally while also making sure they are able to see other calves. Housing should be cleaned and disinfected between calves. At least three inches of dry bedding must be provided for the calf. The ideal environmental temperature for the calf is 10 to 26 degrees Celsius. Whether carried out while the calf is still with its mother or after the calf has been moved, there are a number of recommended best management practices associated with newborn calves. The colostrum we feel is really important. It's, uh, we will use powder if we don't have enough cow cl provided colostrum. More than anything we're looking to get energy and calories into that calf. Calves are born with 3% body fat and it's just not enough, especially in a cold winter, to keep them warm and, and happy. So the calories are really important, but as well it's important to get those antibodies into them as well and, and keep them safe from disease for the next couple months. When feeding the calf colostrum, it is important to remember these four things. Cleanliness, quality, quantity, and quickness. The cow should be milked and colostrum collected as soon as possible after calving. Wear milking gloves and use standard clean milking practices to ensure the teats are clean, sanitized and dried in order to reduce the chance of bacterial contamination. All feeding utensils should be properly cleaned and sanitized after every use. As we can see here, colostrum should be slightly yellow in color. It should look like and have the consistency of melted vanilla ice cream. Don't pool colostrum or feed colostrum that is runny or thin bloody or has mastitis, as these are indicators of poor quality colostrum. Before feeding colostrum to a calf, a colostrum meter or a refractor meter can be used to assess the quality. Only colostrum from cows with a low risk of disease should be fed to calves. The quantity of colostrum consumed by the calf is important to ensure the adequate absorption of antibodies. For large breeds such as Holsteins and Brown Swiss, feed 4 liters of colostrum within 6 hours of birth. Well, for smaller breeds like Jerseys, Guernseys, Ayrshires, 3 litres of colostrum should be fed. The calf should be fed an additional 2 to 4 litres of colostrum by bottle 6 to 12 hours after birth. Not every calf is the same and not every calf will drink well at the first feeding. Some level of patience and persistence may be required. To reduce the chances of navel infection, remove any debris and dip the calf's navel shortly after birth using a 7 to 10% tincture of iodine. This solution should be specifically for navels. Don't use teat dip. The navel cord should be covered in solution from the end all the way up to the calf's belly. 
The navel dipping is done because we did realize that we were having a bit of a problem getting some joint ill in our calves, some infected navels, some herniated navels and that sort of thing. So the navel dip was introduced for all calves just to make sure that we were getting disinfection right across the board, preventing any bacteria from getting into those calves. The selenium is done because it was discovered through some blood work on our calves and our cows that we were having a problem with passive transfer of selenium between the cow and the calf when it was in utero. So in order to prevent white muscle disease and a couple of other diseases associated with that, we started just supplementing everybody at birth with one cc of selenium. All needles are to be given in the neck. Injections of other vitamins and minerals are also available. Talk to your veterinarian to find the best option for your herd. At 24 hours after birth, it is important to re-dip the calf's navel and check it for swelling. If the calf's navel is swollen, hard, hot or painful, it is likely the navel is infected. Consult your veterinarian to develop a protocol for treating navel infections. Record the treatment and follow appropriate withdrawal times. The calf should also be checked at least once daily for clean bedding, access to clean feed and water, and assessed for visual, physical and behavioral health indicators. See Veal Farmers of Ontario's Detecting Calf Disease Early booklet for more information. We, we think it's important to feed all the calves and to treat them all equally because you're, you're looking to get that growth in the first couple months of life. A calf that doesn't do well in the first couple months of life isn't going to do well for the rest of its life either. Those, those are really some critical months and it's important to keep them healthy and to get them growing well and to get them eating well because those, those habits and those trends will continue later on as they grow. If you have any further questions about how to care for calves, check out this website and consult your veterinarian.